Welcome to Salem, Massachusetts, a quiet little town about 30 minutes outside of Boston. Today, the town is a beautiful and lively place, especially in the fall months when the leaves change colors. However, it wasn't always like this. Once upon a time, terrible events took place in this quiet little town. In modern times, the town of Salem is most well known for its dark history. The Salem Witch Trials of 1692 where 20 people were wrongfully accused of witchcraft and sentenced to death. In this video, we're going to visit the exact location of where those tragic events took place, see the house of the one and only John Proctor, and visit the graves of Giles and Martha Corey, who both passed in those terrible events. Let's begin. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, if you like the content, please remember to subscribe and smash that like button. now. Let's go back to Salem. The Salem Witch Trials occurred in the year 1692 and 1693. More than 200 people were accused of practicing witchcraft, the devil's magic, and 20 were executed. 19 of them by hanging at this exact location we'll see today. Eventually, the colony admitted the trials were a mistake and compensated the families of those convicted. The first location we're going to visit is Proctor's Ledge. But first, let's discuss how this came to be known as the exact location of the hangings. For many years, it was believed that the 19 innocent people who were executed in Salem in 1692 were hanged at the summit of Gallows Hill, on the edge of town to the west. The exact site was not memorialized. After all, this was a shameful event that Salem residents wanted to leave in the past. Maps of 1700 Salem show Gallows Hill, but no marker for the execution site. In 1921, local historian Sidney Purley believed he had located the spot of the executions, near the base of the hill on Proctor's Ledge. His conclusion led to the city of Salem to purchase part of Proctor's Ledge in 1936, calling it Witch Memorial Land. No memorial was built, however, and until 2016, most people still believe the executions took place at the summit. A team of researchers began to reconsider all the evidence in 2010, and eventually concluded that Pearlie was right. The real execution spot was confirmed as Proctor's Ledge in January of 2016. Part of the evidence included 1692 eyewitness accounts of nearby neighbors who were able to see the hangings from their homes. Proctor's Ledge today is a simple memorial, designed by landscape architect Martha Lyon was dedicated on July 19, 2017, the 325th anniversary of the hangings of Sarah Good, Elizabeth Howe, Susanna Martin, Rebecca Nurse, and Sarah Wilde. Embedded in the semicircular wall are stones engraved with the names of the 19 victims. Well, this is the memorial that's here today. These names right here, these are all the people that were hanged right up there. Gallows Hill, Proctor's Ledge. I guess it's the both, pretty much both, the same thing. Um, but yeah, these are all the names of the victims that were hanged up there. But I was just telling the gang, like Giles Corey, who's one of the accused that was pressed to death. His name is not on here because obviously he was pressed to death. He did not die on the hill, but... It's a very nice memorial that they did. I think it's pretty much new, too. It was, came out in 2019, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, if you've ever been here, though, let me know in the comments down below. Below. But yeah, this is something. Very nice and peaceful. And now we're going to take a walk up to where it all happened. See how it goes. And if you do want to make your way here, there's the Walgreens that you can park in. Parking is very hard in Salem. And then it's right here. Now let's walk up to where it all happened. So pretty much to find this location, you gotta go to the Proctor's Ledge Memorial and then just do a big like U around and follow the sidewalks and you'll come up to it. It's 
So there is a house straight ahead, but you are allowed to be on here. We just have to walk, follow the fence line, walk through the woods, and we'll go. And we have arrived. So what you're looking at right here, this is, this is where it all happened. Now, obviously these are most likely not the same trees as in the 1600s when it happened, but who knows? That one looks pretty creepy broken right there, huh? Oh, and people leave rocks and coins too. So it all would have happened right here. And then once it was done, they were thrown down there. This is pretty crazy to be here in person. This discovery was just made a few years ago too. I'll add some photos and videos in this YouTube video, <laughs> video and video. But scientists just discovered not that long ago that this was the actual location where it happened. Well, it sure doesn't look like much, but it turns out that this spot is the very site of one of the darkest moments in our state history. This is the actual site of the Salem witch hangings. And neighbors have suspected for years that they knew the truth. Tonight, as Shante Land shows us, they have actual proof. No, the markings on this map. 1700. That 72-year-old Thomas Brophy has kept in his family. And this area here shows what was, as it says here, Gallus Hill. Coincides with what the city of Salem confirms this week to be the exact site of the infamous hangings of 19 people. It's the probable place of executions. From the 1692 Salem witch trials. How do you feel knowing that this right here is in your backyard? Uh, it, like I say, we've always kind of lived with the suspicion that it was. Brophy, whose family built and owned this house for five generations. This is the area over here that everybody is talking about. Walks us to the site. And this is what they call Proctor's Ledge. This, oh, is what, okay. this is what you're standing on right now, this ledge. The homeowner tells me that this is the spot where the accused witches were hung. Many across town say they could see them hanging from this hill. If there was people hanging from a tree right here, they'd be definitely visible. It's definitely a dark part of our history. Salem's mayor, Kim Driscoll, confirms that no remains were buried or remain on the site. The colony accused 200 people of performing witchcraft. They later admitted that the trials and killings were a mistake. It's a pivotal part of American history, and it's informed our modern-day judicial um, undertaking. I think we're dealing with it in the right way by trying to memorialize those that uh, passed away. But after they were, the deed was done and they were thrown down into the ravine down there, after the townspeople left and the judges left, the family members would come and grab them, pick them up, and then go and bury them in there you know, unmarked graves on like their own lands or whatnot, but this is something. This is pretty crazy. This is one of those places where videos I've done in the past, like when I went to Waco, did that whole video it felt really weird it feels it's definitely like a dark energy here not saying like not saying like dark dark but like a sadness type of dark energy here <sighs> this is something Yeah, that was something to see. 
that's uh i mean i've been waiting a while to see it and i've been wanting to see it but it's uh it's something to see i don't even i don't even have words for it glad i was here to see it though and bring you all along next location we're going to go visit the original home of a man who was hanged here probably one of the most famous men that was hanged that year in salem john proctor yes his house is still here it's a private residence somebody lives there still but we're gonna go see it next so let's go John Proctor was a landowner in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. John and his wife were both tried on August 5, 1692. He was then hanged on August 19, 1692 in the Salem Village during the Salem Witch Trials after being falsely accused and convicted of witchcraft. We are approaching the John Proctor house. Funny enough, it does have a pool in the backyard but uh, like I said, this was put up for sale a few years ago and somebody bought it recently. They do have private property signs, of course, but we are walking on a public sidewalk. So this is where the one and only John Proctor lived once upon a time. So it is on this main road, but I would have imagined back in the day, this was all farmland because John Proctor, you know, if you watch the movie, The Crucible, he's farming with his sons in his, in his fields, but this would have been all farmland back in the 1600s. And this is the John Proctor house, 1638. Look at that. I know this is just a little stop on our tours today, but man, it is so cool to see this house actually in person. of John Proctor's house right here. That is crazy. All right, we got one more location for this video. It's a surprise, but you're gonna wanna stick around. This took a lot of research and time to find exactly where this next one was, but we're gonna go check it out now. Let's go. We've made it to our final location right across the street there. That, this whole area used to be the farmland of the Coreys, Giles and Martha Corey, who were hung and pressed to death in the Salem Witch Trials and there's a little surprise coming up. Let's go take a look. Here we are. This area was very difficult to find for me. I saw one YouTube video that was made like 10 years ago that showed there are tombstones here and that was it. There was nothing else, nothing online. And I found the location somewhere on, on some website. I found the location and then I got on Google Maps, got my little guy, dropped him in there. And I, so literally I started up there on the park at the at that side of the park. And I was walking all the way around, right? Until I got to this road. And then I'll show you what I saw next. So I had my little person on Google Maps and I started walking down this way, right? And then out of the corner of my eye, my bottom left screen, I noticed the headstones and I found it. Giles Corey was an English born American farmer who was accused of witchcraft along with his wife, Martha Corey, during the Salem witch trials. After being arrested, Corey refused to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty. He was subjected to pressing in an effort to force him to plead, the only example of such a sanction in American history, and died after three days of this torture. Because Corey refused to enter a plea, his estate passed on to his sons instead of being seized by the local government. As we come down, we get views of the headstones. Let's go check out Martha's first. You know, ladies first. Martha Corey hanged September 22nd, 1692. I'm an innocent person, a gospel woman. She laughed and denied it. Now we'll check out her husband, 
Giles Quarry. Died under the torture of stone weights, September 19th, 1692. Would not put himself on trial, rather he chose to undergo what death they would put him to. And like I said before, all this land right here, this is what the Corys owned. This was their, their farmland, their fields. I don't believe their house exists anymore, but what I do know is all this land, even the land that we're standing on, this once belonged to the Corys right here. I am going to discuss this a little bit in the video, but you could also pause and read for yourself if you want. Peabody Witch Trials Legacy Trial. Trail. I just want to look at the timeline with y'all. So there is a drawing of Giles being pressed right there. Timeline of events. He's born 1619. March to April, 1692, first accusations made against the Corys. Warrant for Giles Corey's arrest, April 18th. Trial of Martha Corey, September 8th. September 19th, he was pressed. And his uh, most famous quote, I believe is right there. Placed heavy stones. More weight was his exact words. Isn't this something? All these years later, that happened in 1692. Jeez. All these years later, people still remember, thanks to obviously the play, The Crucible, the movie, the books, history it all happens right here on their land straight ahead would have been a very good idea of what their fields and farmland would have looked like back in the day like I said no idea where their house would have been, but somewhere on this land. Well, everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I'll see y'all soon on the Travel Channel. Take care.